At least I can still see through the glass. <laughs> <laughs> There are many reasons why I love Australia, but one of those reasons is the fact that this country loves coffee as much as I do. Wherever you go, you can find insane specialty roasted coffees, incredible cafes, it's, it's like my dream come true. Anyway, hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome back to Perth. Ooh, I'm being attacked by some kind of insect. I usually wouldn't care in the UK or Europe, but in Australia, it could be some kind of blood sucking insect, so got to get rid of it. Uh, anyway, if you didn't see my last video, I'm here essentially escaping the doom and gloom that is the UK at this time of year. I'm being looked after by the incredible team at The Lee Collection, an insane private car collection based here in the city. Today, my friend Josh, who works for The Lee Collection, is forcing me to spend some time in that, not, not the Golf, the AMG GT Black Series, a car which I have to admit, not a massive fan of. I, I appreciate it, I suppose, but I just don't really like it that much. When I told Josh that, his jaw hit the floor because that's one of his favorite cars. He thinks I've misunderstood it. Well, I said to him, to be honest, I'd far rather spend some time in an SLS. What just so happens, the Lee Collection also have an SLS. So today, we're taking these two cars to some nearby hills to see, firstly, if I've got the Black Series wrong, or whether I was right and the SLS is actually the one to have. Anyway, for now, I'm gonna sit here, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the coffee. Oh, I'm so glad I came to Australia. Quick update for you, whilst I was sipping away on my coffee, uh, Josh was looking at the lineup of cars and got annoyed that we'd bought a Panamera with us instead of another Mercedes. So he said, let's fix that. And he disappeared for five minutes and come back with an AMG GTR Pro. So we're now three Mercedes and three similarly shaped and I think fairly iconic Mercedes, or maybe they'll all become iconic. Uh, anyway, this is not the first time that I've driven a, a Black Series. I uh, drove one on track at the International Press Launch quite a few years ago now, uh, and drove uh, Schmies in, in Dubai. But yeah, as I said, it's not really a fan of it. It's very good, it's very accomplished, but it's not really for me, and it's not really what I think of as a Black Series, or not maybe what I want from a Black Series. In my mind, Black Series are always kind of hooligans. This thing is essentially a very focused race car with, with number plates. But maybe Josh is right, maybe I've misunderstood it. And I am excited today to get it onto some twisty hill roads uh, and, and push on and see if it makes a little bit more sense. But right now, following the SLS, I'm just going, God, that's a good looking thing. I've always had a sweet spot for those things. So right now I'm actually more excited to drive that. But anyway, focus on the Black Series, Sam. Come on, this is, this is gonna be great. Well, look at this. Welcome to Canning Dam in the Perth Hills. This is an awesome location. I really wanted to fly a drone up there, but there are about 15 signs as I made my way into this sort of park area that said no drones. So we'll leave that be and you can just enjoy it from these shots right here. But I think even better looking than that dam, are these three cars lined up next to each other. How cool does that look? Even though the SLS is now so old and obviously a prior shape, it kind of fits in this trio. It looks so damn good. But what I wanted to quickly do before we crack on, enjoy some incredible roads around here, is actually get that GTR Pro next to the Black Series. So I can kind of show you comparison and, and kind of talk about well, how different this thing is and if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So yeah, let's, let's, move, the, uh, let's move the GTR Pro.
Now, just to make you aware, in this part of Western Australia, there seem to be 10 gazillion flies. And they keep landing on my face and flying in my ear and they're creeping me out. So if during this take, you hear me sort of stumble or do that, it's because the flies are attacking me. And you may see them dotted all over the car anyway. But like, look at these two behind me now. They, they are epic looking cars. Now, just in case you're not that familiar with the AMG GT lineup, a quick reminder, the GTR Pro was the kind of most hardcore and track focused variant you could get before the Black Series came along. Um, I guess if you're kind of trying to make a comparison in the world of Porsche, maybe that's the GT3 and that's the GT3 RS. Or maybe it's more extreme than that. Maybe it's that's a 911 GTS and that's a GT3. It's sort of hard to really compare because they are actually so extremely different. As I'm sure I've mentioned a couple of times in the video, that is essentially a race car with number plates. Uh, and so much of the sort of actual AMG GT race car is carried over onto this thing. Well, this looks like an aggressive road car. I actually think this is the prettier car. This is definitely a, it's, it's a demon, this thing. I mean, you see it on the road or even just parked here, you're like, oh my God. It's just so much aggression. But this looks aggressive in a sort of nicer and prettier way, I think. And I actually think front end is a bit cleaner. You get the uh, the race car front grille on this thing, which is just huge. I mean, it's just massive. It's looking, it almost looks like a hole. Well, this is just very sort of pretty. And you've got these kind of little uh, winglets here on the, on the front bumper and things like that. Um, but loads of other things that you can kind of notice, of course, exposed carbon fiber, that full carbon fiber bonnet with the uh, different sort of uh, air ducts and gaps and cooling and air and everything that's going on. And that continues uh, along the side, different sort of side skirts you can notice there you can also see look a little bit of a lip over the rear wheel arch which you don't get for the GTR Pro and of course the rear wing I mean one of the big talking points for the Black Series was this absolutely ginormous uh, double stacked or triple stacked rear wing you got the lowest element the kind of ducktail then the mid element and the top element uh, whilst with the GTR Pro you kind of just basically get the standard single wing uh, other changes that were made the exhaust pipes moved over to the side of the diffuser where with the GTR Pro it's a central exhaust pipe uh, I'm sure there were some other design changes to the diffuser but I've forgotten what they were and uh, yeah I mean apart from that I guess different tires you get the cup 2 R's the super track focused tires these just running on the pilot sport cup 2's not the R's um, but yeah I mean I think that gives you an idea at just how different these cars are visually and that's not even going into how extremely different they are under the skin but I wasn't really here to compare the black series and the GTR Pro it was to debunk my supposed opinion that I'd be rather that I'd rather be in that instead of this. So I guess let's hit the road, have some fun, and see if that statement is true. Actually, before we go anywhere, I kind of want to prove a point because I get the feeling once I hit the road, I'm going to be talking a lot about the way that that Black Series sounds, and so I kind of wanted to demonstrate or illustrate that before I started yeah blathering on about it. So check it out. I'll rev the Black Series first. Then I want you to hear how good in comparison a GTR Pro sounds, even though essentially it's the same car, even though it's not, as I just proved. And then I thought I'd get the SLS involved, because that car's... Josh, how old's that car now? Um, 11 years. 11 years. Even though that car's 11 years old, it was of a time when we didn't have OPF filters and people weren't considering noise reduction and things like that. So it's Larry, in, in a good way. So here we go. echoing off the dam it's I mean I know we've moved on times have moved on but it's just it's just better so is the GTL Pro anyway I just needed to prove that point because I'm sure I'm going to bring it up again in about three minutes time now I'm going to let you in on a little secret which maybe you've kind of figured out we obviously have to drive these cars to this point so I have had a bit of a go in this thing already now am I going to say that I need to eat my own words well, definitely not in front of Josh <laughs> but it's not better than I remember because I remember this car being very good but I definitely think I like it more than I remembered anyway give the guys a thumbs up let's roll out 
and I'll try and explain my thinking a bit more. It's endless things to sort of switch on and set up in this car. Okay, manual gear mode. I don't want the fully stiff suspension. Stiff, I'm in race. Okay, I think that will do. Here we go. Pretty good road, just outside park. I'm going to say it straight away. Sounds crap. <laughs> Sounds as bad inside as it does outside. But once we start getting to some corners, using the brakes and the steering kind of makes up for it because suddenly I am in one of the best road cars I've ever driven just in terms of handling, feel and balance and I love a front-engined GT car I can't get over how well it handles I can take all of these corners a hundred miles an hour faster than I am doing I mean this is this is easy for me I'm basically asleep because the car does not feel at all stretched I'm imagining right now that the SLS is kind of hard work it's big it's a little floaty it'll be fun this I mean I could set a world record on this road if I wanted to it is so complete but sometimes and I say it regularly on this channel and maybe it's just a personal opinion Really complete cars can be void of a little character. And I really want a Black Series to snarl and shout and every corner get the tail out and just be over the top, overpowered madness. And the whole thing with this car is track, 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 track. It's like a GT2 RS or, or any other super dialed in performance car. So I definitely like it more than I remember, but as an AMG GT3, if they called it that, I probably would have gone, wow. But as a Black Series, I'm just still a bit like, mm. it's so different from all previous Black Series. So I struggled with the, oh my god, there you go, it's a bit of a squirm on some day roads. That's what I say, like, now I love this car. If it's going to do that, I'm like, fantastic. It's when it's all connected and dialed in that I'm like, well, it's bloody hell, it is good. It is spectacularly good. And I have to give Josh that. Those brakes as well are superb out of here. I mean, I've just got traction light, traction light, traction light. How do I dial that back? Well, as awesome as that experience was, it's time to now step inside this, the SLS. A car that I've wanted to drive forever, but never had the opportunity to do so. This thing came out in my kind of formative supercar years, 2010, 2011, I was 20, 21 years old. So I dreamed of being able to experience one of these cars. It's just so cool. Obviously the modern day version of the Mercedes Gullwing. These doors, a lot of people think is the kind of you know, main factor of this car, but it's not the only reason I uh, I like it. Now, hold on a sec. Does it need a key? No, it's keyless go. Look at that, Mercedes also ahead, always so ahead of the time with all their tech. So everything about it is this internal layout. It's obviously that iconic, naturally aspirated engine. Uh, seat controls are slightly weird. Sorry guys, we're figuring this out together right now. Uh, there we go, pushing myself a bit further forward. Now I am imagining that the gearbox is going to be a little bit dodgy and old, but we can look past that. Let's fire it into life. <laughs> there you go, come on. It's just so elegant, I think, this car. It's effortlessly cool. Whilst the driving dynamics might not be anywhere close to that Black Series, I don't really care. We've actually got a bit of a mission. I need to head back into town to get a suit for an upcoming event. So this would be the perfect car to cruise back to Central Perth, then in and around town. It's, it's the gentleman's sports car. That's how I like to think of it. I think of myself as Fangio or Sterling Moss. Anyway, my first time behind the wheel, so I shouldn't get too excited until I've experienced it. Uh, let's give all the lads a thumbs up and uh, I guess we can crack on. <laughs> Oh my god, I immediately love this car. It's genuinely like surpassed all my expectations. Okay, I love a modern classic, 
and I would explain this, this is kind of a sweet spot for me. But yeah, this car's just, it's awesome. It's genuinely awesome. I actually can't think of many things to fall about it. Okay, yes, that gearbox is a bit slow, but it's much quicker than I was expecting. And everything else actually feels kind of modern-ish, but then it's got this real old school charm, which is hard to really sum up. The silver analog dials, the seating position, this roomy, spacious cabin. So many elements are great that it doesn't feel that dated until you look at the screen. The infotainment screen is pretty old, but I'm sure you can do things with that. It's just a really nice driving experience, and then that rumble, and every now and again you get the crackles from the exhaust that feel way more authentic than the synthetic ones in, in the GTR Pro or the Black Series. Visibility's great. Oh, I mean, I always wanted one of these cars. I don't think I'd ever actually buy one. But now I'm like, oh my God, swap the F-Type for an SLS. I never really see myself as a, as a Merc person, but this, this is very me. It encaptures, yeah, all of the kind of 50s and 60s, or 50s, Merc glamour, with a little bit of like, Hakkinen, Raikkonen, Hamilton era, McLaren Mercedes, also a little bit of the sort of Rosberg, Hamilton modern. It's just, it's just brilliant. I think this car, you get it in your collection. If you're a collector, grab one. Unfortunately, paupers like us, these things are gone, long gone. They, they did, I think, bottom out at like, what, 70, 80 grand, three, four years ago. I think they're well on their way to 200 grand. I think they'll just keep slowly creeping up. This, this isn't even a black series. Like this as a cruiser. Oh, I'm so glad. I was worried I was going to be disappointed. But listen to that. I have to just add that that black series is so aggressive on the road. Uh, just to note that it is a rat that's not paint uh, on that car, but it suits it and yeah, it just looks so mean. Uh, I'm happier in here. I, I, I love this car. Oh, you do? I, mate, I love this car. It's yeah. very, uh, very big call. Yeah. <laughs> the L word. It's, mate, it's very me though. It's, it's just like a, it's like a cooler F-Type. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I look at it that way. <laughs> you're, so dis it. you're so disappointed in me. <laughs> I'm not. Is this the, is the suit shop here? I feel like we've just dumped the cars in the middle. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll park up here and then go for there. Cool. Josh is a little bit distracted because we just walked past a Gen 1 Phantom and he was like, that's my favourite car ever. Well, it's not my favourite car ever. I would prefer a Maybach 62, but just, you just don't see them in Perth. See, this is what's surprising, right? You like an executive wafter. You've talked to me about this many times before, yet you love that black series. I'm a versatile gentleman. What can oh, I say? Clearly. I like vehicles of all shapes and sizes. I don't discriminate. Well, I will give it to you. The black series is better than I remember. But is it better I, than the SLS? It's better than the SLS. Well, there we but, go. But, <laughs> but I would prefer, if, I, if it was my money, I'd save the £250,000 in the UK and get an SLS. For, for the cruising, not for the mountain roads, but for the cruising. Have you been in a black series? Uh, sorry, uh, an SLS black series? That was going to be my next point. If that's how good a standard SLS is, I think the SLS black series has got to be next on the test drive list. Can you guys get one of those so I can come back and... Uh, no worries. We'll, yeah. we'll get one of you tomorrow. What's our no? That held the PPF, but there's a slight <gasps> chip in there. How is this possible? I mean, we were on the stoniest roads in the world. I'm, I'm going to say that's that wasn't me. I, I not this one. Okay. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. No. Sorry about that. It's not been windscreens kind of days. At least I can still see through the glass. <laughs> okay. Suit. Uh, hired and uh, damage found on the SLS. I'm actually jumping into the GTR Pro because you know what, why not? Let's hit the cars back to the Lee Collection warehouse and I just thought, might as well have a go in this, see how it compares to the other two. Um, but yeah, pretty much wrapping up the day. Yeah.